On the morning of July 1st, 1863, an incident occurred where a civilian of the town, John Lawrence Burns, joined the Union Army and fought in the battle. He was wounded several times. He survived the battle, went on to become somewhat of a national celebrity. Matthew Brady took his photograph. N.C. Wyeth did an illustration of him. Bret Hart wrote a poem about him. And of course, four months after the battle, when Abraham Lincoln came to give the famous Gettysburg Address, he wanted to meet John Burns. And I think that one event, him shaking John Burns' hand in front of dozens of reporters in the town square, probably solidified John Burns' legacy as an American hero. Now, we are standing at the spot where on the afternoon of July 1st, John Burns actually fell. I think a lot of people know that he uh, came out from the town on the afternoon of July 1st, joined the 150th Pennsylvania uh, behind the camera, actually ended up fighting with elements of the 7th Wisconsin Infantry, also tried to join the 2nd Wisconsin. Um, he was wounded several times. Uh, we're not sure exactly how many times because John Burns uh, has different versions of his own story. And according to the various versions, he's wounded somewhere between one and seven times. Most people accept that he's wounded two or three times. The final wound was through his leg. And actually, it occurred right here behind me in this field. And on the afternoon of July 1st, as the Southern Army is driving the Union Iron Brigade back, John Burns comes running out of the edge of the woods, and he's shot in the leg, and he falls out here. And he lays there on the reverse slope of this ridge, which some people refer to as McPherson's Ridge, and some people refer to as Buford's Ridge. Some people refer to as Eastern McPherson's Ridge. But one thing I'd like to point out is when he fell and Pettigrew's brigade was pushing out through the woods, the Pettigrew's brigade kind of halted and then Pender's division came on. And Alfred Scales' North Carolina brigade passed over this rise of ground and across this field in their attack against Seminary Ridge. And when Scales' brigade passed apparently the unconscious, John Burns at that point, um, insensible John Burns, maybe. Uh, they passed by Union artillery along Seminary Ridge, opened fire at Scales Brigade and decimated their attack. And there's no doubt that infantry fire and canister rounds were bouncing all along this ridge around which the wounded Burns uh, was positioned. And not just him. A bunch of wounded northern soldiers that didn't make it across this field ended up being targets for the northern army firing against the southern advance. Now, of course, Scales Brigade was halted, but Perrin's Brigade and uh, Junius Daniel and troops north of this actually broke through the Seminary Ridge Line, caused a northern retreat through the town. And that night, while Burns was in this field, Confederate soldiers came upon him. He apparently had realized he might be in some trouble. So according to his account, he threw his musket as far as he could, and he dug a hole and buried all his ammunition and rolled on top the spot. And when Southerners found him wounded out here, they asked him what he was doing. And he told them that he had lost his cow. Didn't know what happened to that cow, and he came out here, and he's wounded by, while he's looking for it. That's the most popular version. He also told people that his wife in town was, he told people that he told the Confederates his wife was in town. Um, she was sick and the doctor was out on the other side of Seminary Ridge and he was going through the lines to try to get the doctor for his wife when he was accidentally wounded. I don't think the Southerners who spoke to him believed him any more than we believe his stories today. But... Um, they let him go. They probably figured he was uh, mortally wounded. The next morning, Burns crawled to the Riggs house at the edge of the town. 
And as luck would have it, on the afternoon of July 2nd, a uh, wagon from a local family with a blind horse was coming down to Chambersburg Pike. Some Southerners stopped it and said, hey, there's a guy over here who needs transportation back into town. They put Burns in a wagon and took him back to his house. And his wounds were um, cared for and he survived the battle. When I was researching this for the book I wrote on John Burns, the favorite story I came upon was the fact that when Burns was wounded, a Northern soldier from the Iron Brigade stopped near him and Burns asked him if he would deliver a message to his wife that he was wounded. And the soldier was running into the town, saw the house with the high porch, went up to the door and knocked on it. Mrs. Burns came out and he explained that John had been wounded in the battle and she needed to come out and get him. And she looked at him and said, I told him not to go out there.